I could make that. I hear it at craft fairs waiting for customers to buy my handmade work. I read it in comments on photos of my crafts and social media. There are two questions that come to mind when I hear this. The first is, will you actually make it? Do you really have the time and money to research techniques and source materials, test patterns, and make prototypes until it looks like the one I've spent years developing? The second question, and probably the more important one, is should you? You probably think I'm going to say no right away, but it's more complicated than that. If I hadn't ever tried to make a crafty project I fell in love with, if I didn't try out new skills so I could duplicate the kind of project that fills me with joy, if I had just purchased every handmade item that ever made me smile without thinking about the process that went into it, would I be who I am today? Would I have the knowledge or the tools to develop my own style and create my own designs? And would I earn enough money to support the artists I love and be able to truly appreciate what went into the product I bought? One of my favorite things about making items by hand is the sense of spirit and excitement it gives people. That just seeing something that someone else made can inspire you to create your own art. There's a whole community of skill sharing out there. YouTube creators make DIY tutorials, artisans take on apprentices, trades are passed down to family members, and it's kind of beautiful. Whenever I've been inspired by art and used that as motivation to fuel my mind and fingers to build something of my own, it isn't even really the final product I'm after. In fact, I rarely even keep the things I make. It's the sense of forming something lovely out of nothing. The sense of accomplishment I get when I'm truly proud of something I've made. It doesn't just make me a better maker, it makes me feel like a better person. Of course I want to share that feeling with others. I absolutely want to pass on my skills to people like me who are filled with ideas and crave a way to express them. But a little part Part of me breaks when I find, for example, an Etsy shop selling multiple plushies that were clearly made to look as close to mine as possible. So you might be able to see why I'm torn here. How can I teach and inspire like so many others have taught and inspired me, while still communicating that there's a line there? Do I have a right to be upset that someone's selling owls and foxes and penguins in the exact same shapes and colors as the ones in my shop, while I'm still releasing YouTube videos giving away free patterns and instructions for YouTube exclusives I designed? like my monster book and pygmy puffs, and celebrating the people who make those and send me photos while politely asking them not to sell them. I put a line of text on my patterns asking that you guys don't sell anything that you make from my patterns to try to gently discourage this sort of thing. But I'm finding that there really isn't a place to ask that when I've purposely decided not to release patterns or make tutorials for the designs that I sell in my shop. I don't want, please don't steal my designs to be the first thing people see when they look at my lovingly designed branding on my shop's homepage. I didn't realize at first that this wasn't something everyone would just know not to do. Take Pinterest, for example. If someone sees one of my snowy owl plushies there and wants to pin it, you can really flip a coin to find out whether that item is going on their shopping wish list or their things to make DIY board. There are plenty of people who just don't see anything wrong with duplicating a piece of art yourself instead of buying it from the original artist. For them, it's just part of the culture. If someone else made it, you probably can too. And I bet you can even find instructions online. But that way of doing things tends to ignore something really important, which is that the original artist spent a lot of money and time bringing that idea to life in the first place, which you get to totally avoid by skipping that entire step and jumping right to production. I like to think that intent has a lot to do with it. If you're copying to learn a skill that you're planning to eventually use to make your own designs, that implies more respect for the artist's process. But starting an entire business by selling products you didn't design yourself in the same marketplace, potentially taking away both designs and sales from that artist? It's not exactly the sort of supportive community skill sharing I was talking about. There's also a difference between following a tutorial for a project that the artist intended for people to make and making your own attempt at a handmade item for sale. I specifically designed the plushies in my tutorial videos so you guys can make them for free. And I purposely don't sell them online, even though you've asked me to, because I don't give out the patterns for the plushies in my Etsy shop. One of my personal goals with my handmade work is to develop a style that people recognize, something I can be proud of because it's not like anything else out there. And I'm the one who made it that way, so that when you look at a new character, you know that I made it, and it fits with the whole line. People even come to me when they see someone copying my designs because they recognized my design work in someone else's shop. And even if my designs are copied, the duplicates won't look just like the ones I make, because I have six years of practice at making these designs, and I've experienced exactly how they came to look like this firsthand every step of the way. And that feels pretty good. Someone who chooses to make and sell my designs when they could be using that time and effort to develop their own are depriving themselves of that entire concept. Especially with a marketplace as crowded as Etsy, standing out with unique and original items is what gets you noticed in search results. You're kind of putting yourself 
behind right out of the gate if you're purposely making things that look just like what's already available in your category. So while it may save you time and money up front, growing that business is going to be twice as difficult. And the original artist will probably find out. And they might not feel so good about it. So now, here I am, feeling a little bit stuck. I've shared so much of what I've learned on YouTube, and I still have tons of ideas for more videos about selling handmade and making plushies. But have I already shared too much? Will I be hurting my own business if I continue designing plushies specifically to teach you guys how to make them for free? It's possible. But the truth is, I've been seeing a lot more people who've been using my tutorials creatively and treating my work with respect, who are learning from me, then adding their own skills and experiences into the mix to create something totally new. And I really love that aspect of my job. You guys inspire and motivate me right back. So that's where I'm at. Do you think that this culture of copying has benefits in the DIY community? Or does it hold us back creatively and disrespect the artists who are copied? Can the answer be both? And what should we do about it? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.